everybody, welcome into this Adobe Lightroom tutorial brought to you as always by tutvid.com. You saw the title up there, right? Five different ways to retouch wedding photos in Lightroom. It's pretty simple, it's pretty easy. And remember, best way to help promote and share this video is slap a like on it. Also make sure you subscribe to my channel so you never miss any Lightroom or photography related tutorials in the future. And also buy my Photoshop course all about how to retouch images in Photoshop. That's a great way to support me in fact. But this tutorial here is totally free. Five ways to retouch different types of wedding photos in Adobe Lightroom. Let's check it out. Here we are. Um, I actually have a bunch of different photos from this wedding that I shot. I just grabbed an old wedding, one of my favorite ever weddings uh, here in Philadelphia that I photographed. Uh, and we're just gonna we're gonna jump in and get things kicked off right off the bat. We're gonna go with a classic shot here, the dress. Uh, so here we are in the 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 one of the upper floor suites of this hotel um, in downtown Philadelphia. And of course, as you're doing all the preparation shots, it's always nice, if you can, to get a dress shot. And this, I don't believe this was actually the finished dress shot because we had one of those fancy schmantz hangers that had like the bride's name wrapped into it with the wire. That, I don't know if they're still trendy, but they were trendy at the time. Uh, anyway, we're going to, uh, this, this edit is going to be sort of the candid, sharp black and white that I like to do. So I'll begin here by uh, converting it to black and white. And in this particular instance, um, we're shooting into this crazy backlight. It was very early in the morning, um, but still we have all this light flooding into this hotel room. So a heavy amount of uh, backlight. Um, and it, we really want to fill in these shadows with light, but I don't mind the back getting even more blown out because it kind of adds to that dreamy effect, right? Where, where light is just spilling everywhere. So we're going to bump the exposure up uh, quite a bit here. So we'll go like 1.1 uh, uh, on the exposure plus side. And as I do that, I'm, I'm really noticing the crazy curvature, right? Of this, uh, of this shot. This would have been, let me hit the letter I and bring up my information. This would have been shy yeah, 24 millimeters here. So there's a little bit of curvature there in the lens. Let's uh, close the basic tab for a second and go down to lens correction and just tick on enable uh, profile corrections. Still maybe not quite as perfect as I would like. Uh, we can go down to like transform and choose to level it and see what that does for us. Levels things off a little bit. Mm, maybe not quite uh, quite how I want it, but um, I'm not going to be too, too picky either. I could grab this tool and just drag like a line straight across this little uh, soffit area. Oh, okay, it's pretty flat. Maybe my eyes are just playing tricks on me. Um, and I'll do another line up here across this sort of crown molding here and make sure that that is pretty flat as well. There we go. Kind of pull that all right into place. We got nice nice straight lines in our image. We could do it with verticals as well, but I'm not gonna spend too much time messing around with that. Uh, let's go back to basic. After we've uh, added that exposure, I'll probably pump a little, just a little bit of clarity, just to give a little bit of mid-tone punch, and it still appears to be pretty washed out. So let's try cranking up the contrast here. Um, I kind of dig that. And as I crank up the contrast, there might be a little bit too much vignetting, but maybe not, I, I, I kind of like it. Uh, we'll dip the blacks a little bit, and we'll also dip the shadows just a tiny bit. Uh, and there we go. I, I kind of like that. I'm actually going to go ahead and hit done down here to get rid of those leveling lines. We didn't do that after we hit uh, did the transforming. Uh, under here, uh, under effects, just to help kind of really establish the heavy contrast, we'll use the dehaze slider just to really bump the contrast as well. So we still have that really flooding, dreamy light, uh, but we get this really cool overall effect. And of course, don't forget to slap some sharpening on it. We'll pump to about 100% sharpening or 100 in the amount slider, excuse me. Uh, radius here, if I hold down the alter option key, I can see just how much the radius slider doing right about there is probably good and then also hold down alter option with the masking slider and there we go i'll drop that there uh, i'll drop my my masking in there just so i'm not sharpening the grain and stuff on these areas of flat color now there are these sort of like patched areas i would have to go into photoshop to clean those up i'm not going to worry about them here in lightroom it was you know, some work they had done in the room and the paint didn't quite match or something and it really sticks out. Uh, so we can go ahead and just look at the before and after. There's the shot out of camera and there's after we do some black and white big ups, nice sharp contrasty black and white where we still have great detail and sharpness. The, the, the pillows look so shiny and so, you know, luxurious and awesome uh, in that black and white. I really, really dig it. So if you guys are enjoying this video, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, you can support the channel by picking up a copy of my a Photoshop course all about how to retouch images in Photoshop. I really think you'll enjoy it. And you'll get a lot of great value out of it. And again, like I said, it just helps support what we do here at tutvid.com. So if you pick up a copy, thank you very much. If not, we got four more 
wedding photos that we need to retouch. So let's jump back in here and get to work. Uh, I'm going to just go back to my normal uh, view mode here. And the next shot is going to be uh, some bridal portraits. We went outside. We had an off-camera flash. It was kind of a rainy day, so we kind of naturally had this beautiful, amazing soft light. But I still wanted to break out a big, it was like a seven-foot octa, uh, not your standard off-camera flash for your wedding photographer. Uh, but I like to break out the big lights sometimes and really get some great stuff. Uh, so let's take a look at how we go about retouching this photo. So the first thing I want to do is go into my tone curve and boost my shadows and reduce my highlights. So I immediately just want to kill off contrast because it's going to allow me to sort of selectively um, bring contrast back where I want it, play around with um, some different filters and really give this a nice cinematic look. Um, looking at the histogram here, we definitely need to brighten things up. I want to move some of these tones and they probably need to be here around the middle range. So let's try just boosting the exposure a little bit. I want to be careful that I don't blow out the dress. So maybe I'll just reduce the whites and the highlights a little bit and boost the shadows a little bit more. All right, something like that is probably pretty good. Um, I could look to warm things up or cool things down. I'm not sure what I want to do here. I'll warm things up just a little bit. Uh, I'll throw a couple drips of green in there as well. Uh, sometimes the client is very specific about the colors. They don't want to go too warm or too cool. Um, I like to take some creative liberty. You know, I like to think that they hired me for my overall vision from taking the photos to retouching and, and doing the color as part of it. We'll throw a little bit of clarity in there just to give a little bit of punch as well. Um, in terms of vibrance... I don't know, reducing the vibrance gives you almost like a movie-like look, but uh, increasing the vibrance is kind of cool. I kind of like that as well. You do want to be really careful and make sure you don't make the skin too yellow or too orange. So just take care of that as you're editing. But basically, the whole reason I, I reduce contrast here in the tone curve is because I'm just looking to introduce as much dynamic range as possible, make my make my pictures look as expensive as possible by just, just sucking out as much detail as I can. And then what I can do is come in here and do like just a slight S-curve and just boost some of the, the contrast in the middle areas of the photo. And you can see even just doing that, that, uh, that vibrance is off the chart. So in fact, I'm going to take the vibrance back. And because their skin still looks, I think, a little too orange, we're going to come down here to HSL. We'll go to saturation, and we're going to choose oranges. Or we could just grab the little uh, slider and pull down on her skin. And that's just going to pull some of the color out of the oranges and reds. And you can see before and after. We just pull some of that orange out of her skin. i uh, really make that look nice. Now, of course, we'll go into detail. We'll just throw some sharpening in here. I'll boost the radius a little bit. I'm not really going to, you know, focus too, too much on this. I'm just going to pull my masking slider over. I was holding an alter option there. Great. So, you know, you know, sharpness, sharpness, good. Uh, you probably want to go to like one-to-one, -one, by the way, when you're looking at sharpness, just to make sure you're getting it nice and sharp. Uh, we do want to, however, we can try applying more dehaze here as well. Um, and you can see it's going to give us some really good richness. We want to be careful here, like on her chest. It's really like pulling out her tan and making it look pretty bad. So you want to be, you know, again, be kind of slight on your dehazing. It can give a nice like middling punchiness to the contrast, though. Um, one of the things I do want to do, I want to go to the graduated filter here. And I want to try to make the bottom a little bit darker and the top a little bit brighter. So we're going to set the exposure here to like just maybe like a third stop. So 0 0.33. And we'll pull this down from the top. There we go. Cool. And and then I'm going to hit the new button right there, and I'm going to go like probably negative 0 0.66. So we'll go two-thirds of a stop here for the bottom and pull up on the bottom. Well, let's try pulling up. There we go once more. Cool. So we can shut that off, and you can see there's before and there's after. So it just totally changes the overall look of the image, really makes it look like the bulk of the light is coming from the top of the image and falling down the photo. Gives it a really cool overall effect. I like it a lot. And we can go to a camera calibration here, and we can mess around with the way that the shadows are tinted. Uh, whether we go green with the greens or more magenta. I kind of think I like pumping some magenta into there and what that's doing for me. And just overall look over the photo. If you need to go back to basic and adjust your temperature a little bit, push it up or push it down. I think I might push this up just a little bit. We can do that. Uh, and then last but not least, if it needs a little cropping, I could go in and just do a little rotation, a rotation work. Uh, and crop the image just a little bit if it needs to be. I think I like that just like that. Well, you know what? Actually, I might have rotated her just a little bit too much. Let's bring her back just a little bit. Hold down shift and option to just pull that crop way back out. Enter or return to commit that. And there we go. We have our second image. So we can see there's the image straight out of the camera. There it is after we've done some retouching work in Lightroom. Pretty quick, pretty easy, pretty straightforward stuff. Uh, but we help transform the lighting, the sharpness, the overall contrast. I mean, you can just look at like her fur and how much more punchy it looks in this photo compared with the image straight out of the camera.
All right, let's go back to our loop view here. Uh, See, so this was a fun photo too. Um, and this one we really could have rotated and stuff, but let's, we've already done one of the location bridal shots. Let's do one of the group shots. This is all natural light here. Uh, and I really like this because of all the greenery in the background. They kind of had these greenish gold dresses while they're alternating with some of these silvery uh, type dresses. Uh, so first thing right off the bat, before we do anything, we're gonna do some lens corrections. Let's go lens correction, enable profile correction. Uh, and we can play around with the distortion, make it kind of exactly how we need it to be. I'm gonna increase that distortion slider a little bit just to try to get them as level as possible I'm also gonna go to detail here and I'm gonna sharpen this image up let's see make sure we get this you know decently sharp and then I'm gonna hold down alter option drag masking up again we're you use the masking slider just to make sure you're not masking noise and therefore accentuating noise in big areas of of solid color in your image we want to focus the sharpening on the details of the image uh, so that does that that's good enough a radius and detail at the default of 1 and 25 is great and what I want to do is I want to make more of like a visco style you know faded film effect for this shot so we're gonna to go to the tone curve we're gonna pull up on the black slider here or the black point excuse me so I'm gonna pull up 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 on that and I'm gonna pull down on the shadows to just increase uh, the the kind of the depth of my shadows, but it also helps to flatten out the darker tones in the image. And you see how I get that very faded look, right? We go very quickly from an image that doesn't have very much fade to, hey, we've got some fade going on. And then I'm going to add a point up here, which would be in the highlights and just boost the contrast to the highlights a little bit. And I'm gonna pull the white point down a little bit. So again, that's just gonna fade the overall contrast. We're gonna choose our channel, a uh, channel selector here, right there, that RGB. And I'm gonna go to my red channel and I'm gonna boost the reds in the highlights, but just watch the skin of the girls you don't want to blow out the skin and make them look like a group of lobsters so just be very careful and then I want to pull down and increase the cyan in the shadows again very subtle very 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 subtle effect there's before there's after great I think what I'm gonna do is also go to the green channel and I can see here on my histogram there's a lot of green in the darker parts of the image which makes sense because all these dark pixels here or the vast majority of them are gonna be uh, taken up in our green channel so I'm gonna just click to place a point on my curve right there and sort of like hold the line and I'm gonna pull up on the greens that are gonna be flooding into uh, my shadows just like that in fact I may need to move this point back down the point a little bit maybe move back down here I just want to look to add a drip of green to those really flat shadows it's going to really kind of I don't know it just really sets this effect off all right if we want to do we can go to blue and add a little bit of yellow to the highlights by just pulling down on our on our top you know white point here in the blue channel all right, something like that. Collapse the tone uh, the tone curve. We can go over to HSL as well and playing around with the hues, sometimes of red uh, there in the skin. We can watch the skin of the girls go from like very reddish pinkish over here to a little bit more natural, natural given the heavy treatment we're putting on the photo. Uh, probably don't want to mess around too much with that. You can see the whoa and then whoa. Uh, so, you know, just a very little bit if you need to push or pull some color out of the skin. Uh, same thing with yellow. You're going to affect while we're affecting their col the, the color of the flowers as well. But I kind of like that if I push it way back. But just really, you got to watch the skin tones when we're doing stuff like this. Uh, here for greens, we can mess around. We're not getting too much. Uh, same thing with aqua. All right, we're not going to mess around too much with, with HSL. We're just going to kind of tweak the hue of some of those colors. We could actually go uh, for, try boosting the greens, the green saturation a little bit if we want. But, yeah, that's that's probably good. And we can run up to basic as well, and usually basic you look at first, but with an effect like this, I'll usually go in and play with white balance after the fact and just kind of see, you know, do I want to add a little bit more orange into there? Do I, want to, do I need to add more green or do I really need to remove a little green? Maybe I need to remove a little green. And then do I want to throw a little contrast in or reduce contrast? I actually might want to increase the contrast a little bit here and then reduce the vibrance just a couple clicks, especially here with the girl on the far right. Her skin was starting to get kind of blown out color-wise. So maybe I'll go like negative three, four, five on the, the uh, vibrant slider and then just push a little bit of clarity into it. Again, you got to be careful with the clarity slider. You can really make things bad. And if we need more fading action, we can boost more light into the blacks here though I think I'll just I'll actually crunch the blacks down a little bit because it just even more accentuates the fade that the curves adjustment is putting on our image and exposure might need to get bumped up just just a little click something like that looks good and last but not least we can go down to cal camera calibration and again throw more green in the shadows if need be or throw some magenta into those shadows if need be again it just all depends on the effect you, uh, for which you're shooting I might just drop a little bit of green into my shadows and then fuss with my primary green a little bit and see what happens here if I slide it this way 
eh, it's kind of making everything brown green. If I go this way though, we're kind of getting this almost cyan effect, which is really cool. And then I'll probably desaturate that green primary a little bit. So you can see there's before, there's after. We're just help washing that effect out uh, a little bit. So let's check it out. There's before and there's after. We get this very visco film style faded effect. And oh, by the way, I should, I'd be remiss if under effects I didn't add a little bit of grain, right? You want to be careful. If you add too much grain, eh, people start to get a little, uh, they're wondering what's going on if it's just a bad camera you're using or something. But sometimes the grain, the film grain effect can be nice. So you can add a little grain as well if you feel so inclined. Grain also helps just blend all of your tones and colors together. Um, you just the, the main thing with grain is you want to just make sure you don't go over the top. Uh, and there you go, before, after. So you get a nice sort of faded visco film effect as well. And I'm going to jump back into my loop view. Uh, next up, I want to talk about some venue shots. So these are, you know, these were all shot in really low light. And so we need to boost the light. And I also want to infuse color and mood into these photos because they spent a huge amount of money on this location and all the decorations that went into it. And the bride actually did a lot of hand painting and all kinds of crazy stuff. Uh, so I really want to bring out what I remember from the venue. So the first thing we'll do is we'll come over to basic and we're going to infuse some light into this using uh, exposure. So we'll go up like a stop and a half. Uh, we're going to push this up, up, up. And we can see here in our histogram, we're really kind of spreading things out a little bit. It probably could still stand to be a tiny bit brighter, but also by leaving shadows and some of the darkness in there, we're, we're leaving some of the mood that was there. So I like that a lot. Uh, I think I want to maybe try to make this a little bit cooler. So we'll, we'll knock this down to like 3,600 on the uh, temperature slider. And then maybe, mm, do I want to push? I definitely don't want to push green into it. Maybe just a few drips of magenta. I'll go plus five on the magenta. That looks pretty cool. And here's where I can push additional light into the shadows. So I can just brighten up those shadows a little bit more. You want to be careful. If you push the shadows kind of beyond where they're, they really are going to go, you're going to really open up a lot of your grain in your, uh, in your shadows. Just be careful of that. We'll bump up the blacks here as well. That's going to kill off some contrast, but we'll restore some order order here with our contrast slider or really what we could do is restore some order over here with the tone curve let's go to our rgb channel and we can just pull down a little bit darken things that way and then pull up here until all the highlights look about right and you can see there's before there's after we just infuse some really good some really good uh contrast into the image whoop let's pull down on that once more there we go something like that and one of the things you may want to do too is like let's go into the blue channel and let's push some blues into the shadows a little bit more just a little bit. You don't want to go too, too crazy. And if we pull down up here, we'll add a little bit of yellow to the highlights. And that kind of gives us this, uh, this softened, overall softened effect. You want to be very careful with it. Though. You push it too far, it starts to look like a cheap effect. And then at this point, I would use like HSL and I would target specific things like the yellows and oranges here in the scene. Maybe I want to push the, the color in those objects up a little bit. So I'll push the saturation of my yellow and orange up. You can see what that's doing there to my foreground. It's giving me a lot more color. I could also push the blue up in the background, but probably what I want to do with the blue in the background is go to luminance and make it just straight up brighter. So let's go with blues, purples, aquas, make all of those brighter in the background. So we can see before HSL, after HSL, it's bringing out the blue highlights in our glasses. That looks really cool. Uh, all that looks great. Uh, once more, we can go to detail on here. I'll just drag sharpness and masking up. I'm not even really going to pay too much attention to it. Um, looking at this image, there is a bit of grain. We probably shot it. What, what ISO? ISO 800, not too bad, uh, but I think this was shot on a I want to say a 5D Mark II. So you're going to have a little bit of grain from ISO 800. Uh, so you could go a little bit of noise reduction, but just be very wary of luminance uh, noise reduction. You tend to kill off a lot of detail as well. But a little bit of lumin luminance noise reduction uh, never hurt anyone too badly. It always hurts a little bit, but the key is not to be hurt too badly. We can come down here to effects again. We can try doing a little dehaze and see what that does for our contrast. But we want to be careful that we don't lose our shadows either. So maybe just a little, just a little pop of dehaze. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's hardly noticeable, but it's there. And then with a camera calibration, all I'm tempted to do is saturate the blues. And if I want, I can take the, uh, the hue of the blue and mess with it a little bit, but I don't know. I don't want to mess with it too much. It doesn't need to be shifted too much. Negative 15 is, is not bad. And then I can shut camera calibration off, turn it on, and you can see we're definitely affecting that a little bit. Uh, and here what I'll probably do uh, is really to bring out some of the detail here just in the glasses. I'll grab my adjustment brush. I'm not going to mess around with exposure, contrast, any of that, saturation. I don't want to touch it. Just clarity. I'll probably go like 15 to 20 on the clarity. I want to make sure auto mask is shut off. 
and I just want a nice large soft edge brush. So I'll use my right bracket key to boost the size of my brush, make sure feathering is all the way up at 100, and just paint some clarity into the sort of this center, uh, the centerpiece here, all these flowers, all the glasses, all the stuff that's sort of in focus in the photo. Uh, there we go, cool. So there's before, there's after. We just add that nice just pop to all that stuff there in the center. So let's check this out. There's before, there's after. We really clean up the photo. We make it just a much more presentable photo. All right, once more, back to loop view here. And let's check out a dance floor photo. So uh, shooting dance floor photos, I almost always try to get a light somewhere, whether it's obviously a speed light on your camera. You can blast it off the ceiling and rain light down. In this case, there was this upper deck up here, right up here, back here. And I was able to throw a light way up on a C stand. You can actually see my C stand. I had this light way up there, sandbagged the living daylights out of it so it didn't fall down and kill kill someone or severely injure someone. Um, but I had this really harsh just lighting reflector up there and the idea was I wanted to get this nice rim light and cast the shadow into the camera as I was shooting the individual dances on the dance floor and just get these nice moody shots. I'm not interested in getting, you know, bright, perfectly lit wedding shots. I really like to play with shadows when I'm shooting weddings and deliver shots that are really different from what a lot of other uh, photographers are going to shoot. So that's just kind of what's going on here. But I also like to uh, sometimes convert to these nice faded moody black and white images so here's how we do this first and foremost and I know usually cropping is a last step thing but just because it's bothering me I'm gonna just crop this a little bit to help kind of level things off there they are right in the middle of the frame and uh, I'm actually not gonna use black and white in this case I'm gonna just use my saturation slider I'm gonna knock that way down I am going to boost my exposure a bit so I'll boost it kind of like that once I kind of see what I'm working with I'll go over to detail I'm going to uh, just hit the one-to-one -one up here it's going to just zoom me into 100%. And uh, I'm going to hit I. Let's see. This was shot at ISO 800 as well. Uh, I'm going to grab my little target here. I'm going to throw it over his face. Let's boost the sharpening. I'm going to reduce detail a little bit. And I'm going to hold down Alter Option. Let's check out where the masking and mask it to kind of, you know, details are a little bit harder to pick out in the dark. So we're going to be pretty selective with our sharpening. And we'll give a little bit of noise reduction. Not too much. It's going to be, we'll really quickly lose detail in a dark shot like this, applying too much noise reduction. Let's close the detail tab. Uh, I'm going to go back to fit here. And what I want to do to really make this a moody, you know, faded black and white shot is we're going to go to that tone curve again. We're going to go to RGB and we're going to pull way up on our uh, our black point there. And then we're going to apply a second point and we're going to pull down. I think I, I think I went up a little bit too much on my black point. Oh, let's double click that. I want a little, a little high on the black point. And what I want to do is pull this secondary point that I just created way down here. So we almost have a flat line going from our black point out to a second point and then just throw a third point in and bring the rest of the image kind of back into line and maybe even push those highlights and things up. So you can see the effect we're creating, right? There's before, there's after. We're able to take this re really dark image with a lot of shadow, a lot of detail lost in the shadows, which I don't mind, and just get this really, really moody black and white shot and really pretty easily. The idea is you're just really flattening those shadows out here using tone curve. And technically, it's probably a really awful thing to do, but it's just a really cool photo. If you're printing the photo, you probably want to make sure you're preserving some details in the shadows because that'll probably look, you know, kind of bad as a print. But as a photo that's displayed on Facebook or online somewhere, this can be a really cool effect. And of course, you can go to effects, throw some grain over it. Uh, no big deal. We'll go high with the grain here just to really exaggerate the effect. And you know what? Let's let's see what a little nah. See, the haze actually does bad things for me here. Let's just not let's not even mess with the haze. That wasn't in the plans anyway. Uh, so yeah, creating this nice faded black and white image is great. We could actually try that trick where we kind of darken up the bottom portion. So let's just throw a little bit of darkness down here at the bottom with a graduated filter. Let's go a little bit darker. Something like about a half stop and go ahead and choose new and let's pull some more light down from the top. Of course, it should make sense light coming down from the top because our light is up there. And let's go, you know, plus a half stop or something round about there. Uh, and let's try just there's before, there's after. Yeah, I kind of dig that. I actually kind of like that a lot. Uh, all right. So let's check this out before and after. You can see there's before straight out of camera. It's not a bad shot. It's kind of cool. But then this faded black and white, I don't know. There's something about it when it's done, if it's in the right situation. It's just a really, really cool photo. Uh, you know, maybe it might never be the centerpiece photo necessarily in an album, but it's a really cool photo to have and to look at. And it just, you know, it'll last uh, for a long, long time. 
So I think that'll about wrap up the five different wedding photo techniques that we're going to talk about. Kind of a candid, sharp, and snappy black and white uh, location lit shot where we're getting these nice rich colors. We do a visco style faded natural light shot. We do a, a colorful shot in low light of the the venue and the place settings and all of that. And then kind of this dark faded shot on the dance floor uh, where we're introducing some light. Oh, there we go. I knew it would load eventually. This kind of darker shot on the dance floor where we're introducing an off-camera flash. But maybe you don't have an off-camera flash. You don't really need one. Uh, they do help a lot though, especially for dark situations like this. Uh, but so we've covered those five different effects and they all just work nicely when you're throwing together an album. You can see here's a, a, one of the albums that we finished up for this particular wedding and just got a lot of really cool photos. We're able to mix in these faded black and whites with very colorful shots uh, with just all kinds of different stuff. We're mixing things together. So there's a, a slightly different take on the, the faded visco effect. I think I like the one we did today a little bit better than the one in the album, but hey, you know what? Uh, all kinds of different stuff that can be done here in Lightroom when it comes to wedding photography, especially if you enjoyed this tutorial. Make sure you leave a little like on the video, drop a comment down below if you have a particular technique that you enjoy in Lightroom that you think everybody should know about. One of the best things about the comment sections. I love hearing from you guys and what you love. Also, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. You'll never miss another Lightroom tutorial in the future for creating or creating for retouching, I should say, five, one, two, three, four, five different types of wedding photos in Adobe Lightroom. That's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.